It's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day. If you are single, honestly, and only to the people that are single, because if you are taken, I am so jealous of you. And I hope you are having such a great time on your little date, on your Jeep adventure to the beach during the sunset. Meanwhile, I am here complaining about my life. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Seriously. Well, we get serious about things. That's why the title is Seriously. It's all the truth here. It's all my truth. Um, Today's episode is going to be about being an influencer and the hardships, the disappointments, the greatness, which honestly, we won't even touch into the greatness that much because I think we see the greatness on everyone's Instagrams reels of just their happy little life but I just wanted to dive into this topic because I got a lot of questions about just like the influencer lifestyle what comes with it also I've been really just for the past week debating my whole entire life and I am an influencer so a lot of my life is um do I even like that word I don't think I like categorizing myself as an influencer I feel like Obviously, I'm not too picky about it because it's like, who cares? It's just like a a label you're putting on yourself. But I feel as though there's a difference between an influencer and like a creator. Should we just start there? In my head, the difference between an influencer and a creator is an influencer is someone who you're seeing every single day go to different places, a smoothie place, post this coffee, post this brand, post their workout class. You know, they're constantly updating you on every single thing in their lives. Kind of how I do. I feel like I'm a, I'm a hybrid of an influencer and creator. Maybe that just means I'm an influencer. But I feel like an influencer is just constantly, like, influencing people to go buy, do this, uh, work on this, like, do this workout routine, eat this meal plan. It's just, like, influencers do that. And I feel like a creator can, you know, not upload as much and as frequently. However, when they upload, it's a creation. So, for example, I feel like I was in my creator era when I was just, like, uploading my YouTube videos, not really posting every day about my life, maybe uploading, um, you know, a dance cover one month and then the next month doing a short film. I felt like that was very creator-like of me. But when I go and do all the other things that I do, it fits the influencer category. Regardless, this is kind of about being self-employed and you know, being your own boss, making your own time, finding your own colleagues and and people you work with, you know, just about all of that. I do have a lot of questions in front of me that I will be checking in on just to make sure that we cover everything that you guys are probably more curious about because I've talked about this just so many times I don't even know (laughs) what I've said and what I haven't said. So I think first things first, can I imagine life not being an influencer this is gonna it's gonna be a little bit about me but also generalized so this one's kind of personal but can i imagine life without being an influencer and the answer to that is quite honestly yes i feel like i love my job and i think the really cool thing about being in this space and doing what i do is that it like actors will act and then if they want to do music they'll have to like transition into music You know what I mean? And start working on that and start building that up for their audiences. I think the cool thing about a creator or influencer is that you have the ability to do kind of anything you want to do. Like, for example, if I wanted to right now get up and go create a musical, I could. I could right now write a script. I could probably hire a videographer and I could make my own musical and upload it to my YouTube channel. You know, and there it is. So I like that my job allows me to do any job I really would want to do. Now, if I didn't have the job of being an influencer, I also think I would survive and and have a good life because I think there's a lot of other things I would be interested in doing, like uh, psychology, for example. I love, like, studying people's, you know, brains, helping people out, giving people advice, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I also, you know, real estate is really fun. I don't know. I feel like I'm a... You know that one personality test that like gives you like entrepreneur, entertainer, um, healer, just like all those things. I think it's called the personality test. Everyone should take it. I don't know what my four letters are, but that test is T. It really is T. 
But I remember when I took that test, I got entrepreneur, which kind of just means that I actually don't really know what it means. But I do think that that's the reason why I would survive not being an influencer, just because I feel like I would find a bunch of other ways to like fill up my time and make a living. So did I ever think I'd get to the place that I am now? No, starting out five years ago or however long ago, oh my God, more than five years ago. I keep saying five years ago because that's when I moved to LA, but I started so long ago. I've been like doing this for a minute. It has been a roller coaster. I think because I've done so much in all those years and just so much has gone on, I don't really remember so much of it. So that's why it's kind of like all gone in a blink of an eye. But, um, but when I first started, I didn't think I was going to be where I am. Of course, <laughs> you can't really like expect anything. I was really, I still to this day, I kind of live day by day. It's just like, what's happening today? What's happening tomorrow? What's happening maybe next week, next month. But that's as far as we get. When I first started, I think I was just going live every day and just chilling at home, doing nothing. And then out of nowhere, I think six months later or so, I think I was already touring and traveling the United States and then going to Europe and just like a bunch of stuff. So things really started jumping everywhere. And then I think I had a chill year after that. And then I moved to LA, started living that life. It's just like, I had no idea where life was taking me. I was really just taking on the ride. Like it was a roller coaster and I'm still on that ride. So did I expect to be where I am today? Absolutely not. Do I know where I'm going to be next year? Next, and, and I don't even know where I'm going to be in six months. You know what I mean? The thing about this space is every second of every day counts. And I want to preface this by saying I'm not complaining about anything. I know how lucky and blessed and all the things. I really know. I'm very self-aware of how influencers are, and I know how lucky I am. I'm just talking and shedding some light on some of the aspects that, you know, people don't talk about as much. But every single day counts. If you, you know, one day slack off and don't do something, it affects the rest of your week. So you can't know what to expect because you don't know how you're going to be for the next, you know, six months. If I, for the next six months, you know, just work every single day from like, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. because I am in charge of my own schedule and I can do, you know, as I please and I could pile on 80 more projects or take away a bunch of projects. It's so, it's a very interesting space when you're in control of absolutely everything you do. It really takes so much, like, discipline and, well, just discipline. It just takes so much discipline to get everything organized, first of all, in your brain, like what's going to make you happy and what's gonna what are you gonna create that makes you happy what are you gonna create that you put out there that people enjoy and makes them happy there's a lot of aspects to be thinking about for yourself and then there's aspects to be thinking about for others and then there's aspects to think about okay once you know what you want to create get your team involved get videographers involved get everyone involved it's just there's a lot of steps but i guess with every single job there comes a lot of steps so whatever. How did I become, or how did I think becoming an influencer at a young age impacted me? I think I had to grow up really quickly. I was 15 when I started, wasn't even out as gay. I think it really sadly stunted my coming out a little bit because I did, obviously, you know, in those teenage years, it was giving very Macon vibes, like very I had a lot of girls come to like my tour and meet and greets and stuff. And I think it was just nerve wracking to see all of these girls, you know, looking up to me and having this image of me and seeing me and following me and like loving me for certain reasons. And then, you know, potentially the fear of coming out and them not feeling the same way about me because of that, I think frightened me. I also think once you build an image of yourself in other people's brains for so long, that can also be scary to, you know, change in front of everyone and everyone will be like, oh, what? Like, it almost makes you, I, I didn't want anyone to feel like they didn't know me or like I was different. I don't know. It, it was a weird thing for sure. So that part was hard. I also think because I was 15, I didn't really get a second to kind of figure out what my adult self was going to be enjoying and loving and 
wanting to do. So it really sets you on a pretty straightforward path. Luckily, if you, you know, are smart and proactive, you can, you know, figure different avenues and different streets to take to make sure you do the things that you love still. But I think it, it makes it a little harder to figure out who you are, who you, what you love, because you are always posting for others and are always doing things for others. So it can be hard to really like get your feet on the ground and grasp who you really are, unless you take time for yourself. Um, do I like the idea of change? Yes and no. I feel like I like change because I constantly need a lot of change. I like when things are moving and different and exciting and it keeps me on my toes. But when things change abruptly and unexpectedly, I kind of quake. Like, it's, like, really, really scary because, well, actually, I don't really know because it's just, like, change is fun because it keeps you on your toes, but I also like kind of knowing everything that's going on. So when I don't know everything that's going on, it's spooky. But that's also because I'm kind of OCD. I've also, you guys, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've been going through like a funk this past week. I feel like it's been a pretty disappointing week. I feel like with disappointments, it comes from outside sources like brands have been hella disappointing. Family can be disappointing. Work can be disappointing. And then you just end up disappointing yourself when, you know, you kind of wallow in the disappointments of the outside. Today I was actually told to get up and shut up, which actually cured my depression, saved me, and thank you God for for that praise because now I'm I'm up and not shutting up, actually talking a lot, but I don't know. I think a lot of the times the worst thing that we can do for ourselves is just sit in our thoughts. Like deadass, like get up and shut up was actually a really good thing to hear because that's all you got to do sometimes. Just get up, shut up, and go do something. It's probably only going to get harder as we grow up. That's just what I was told. And as hard as I may like, be to hear, I heard it and I was spooked and... That's just the truth. It's probably, it is probably going to get harder as we get older. Like, we're going to have kids. We're going to have houses. We're going to be so in our own world that you're going to have to work really hard to socialize with others because you're not going to go to school. You're not going to go to university. You're not going to go to your hobbies. You have to, like, live your life and get your bills paid and work and see your family. So when's the friend time? You know, there's just going to be a lot of other things to worry about. I remember the good old teenage years. Those, those really were the good, like, you don't know until you leave them, but those were such good years. There was nothing to worry about, such minimal inconveniences to worry about. I remember I was watching a TikTok or something where someone talked about, you know, people getting mad about who's getting out of the car first and just little tiny things that in the moment seem like such a big deal to you. But then you look back at it and you're just like, God, that was the dumbest thing to just like worry about. And that's kind of how growing up is. You when you grow up, you realize how stupid the little things you were worrying about, like, don't matter anymore. Um, but back to being disappointed. My friends have hella been disappointing me this past week. I think I'm just in this era where it's... <laughs> there's obviously two ways to look about it. It's like, yes, everyone's busy and going through their own things. So that gives me time to go through my own things and, and work on myself and independence woo independent era yes but there's also the like sad truth that you may not have you know the same group of close friends that you once did like I've always had that one BFF that I can call up in the morning and do skincare with and you know go run errands with and go be excited to hang out with and I feel like right now because one of my friends is dating and because another one of my best friends is in college and one of my best friends, you know, went through a breakup and has been, you know, MIA and just not reaching out at all. So, and one of my friends lives really far. Just, there's been a bunch of, like, inconveniences and disappointments that I'm not mad because everyone's going through their own shit. There's nothing to be bad about. It's just 
sad. And it, again, a disappointment because that means I, you know, I'm more isolated. I'm more alone. And I think just for the past few days, I've been wallowing in that as well as, you know, work sometimes can be overwhelming for me because it was hard for me to create for a while just because I was so lost in what I wanted to do. And I'm glad that in January, I obviously got a lot better and, and everything like that. But I think when it comes to, you know, being disappointed with friends, that kind of brings your mood down a little bit. And then kind of still having that overwhelming stress about just what to put out, I think sometimes can be super overwhelming. And then you can go back to your old habits of just not getting up and not taking care of yourself as much and not responding to texts as much. But then obviously now I'm working really hard to snap out of that, get up and shut up. Just like, come on, push through because you don't have to wallow every time. Is wallowing the right word? I think so. You don't have to wallow in the sadness every time. You can just push through. Like I said in the first episode of me coming back this year, do it for the you tomorrow. Do it today so you tomorrow doesn't have to stress out. Get this podcast done today so you tomorrow doesn't have to stress out, you know? All you can do is try. And if you're trying, I mean, that's it. That's all you can do. I mean, try and, and tr also, I need to talk to my family more. I think I'm realizing now. Calling my family just to have someone kind of holding you accountable. Ooh, hold on. That's actually the two things. Trying, but while you're trying, kind of have someone to hold you accountable, whether it's your family, your manager, your friends, whatever it may be. Right now, the friends are out of the question. My manager, honestly, is really good at holding me accountable. Um, but I feel like just my family, by keeping you accountable, I just mean the simplest thing like you calling your mom once every day in the morning. So you wake up, you do your morning routine, you call your mom. That keeps you like accountable of like getting your day started and doing your shit. You know what I mean? So just try and have someone that you can kind of do little check-ins with so they can hold you to it as a routine. I'm saying the advice that I need to be giving myself. I think the issue that I've had with content and probably a lot of influencers have with it is Right now I'm in this era and I know I'm going to, that's the thing too. It kind of makes me hopeful, I guess, but also a little sad, but hopeful and excited because I know I'm going to be doing it soon and I'm excited for that point of life where I can just, you know, let out all the creative juices and do everything that I've been wanting to do. But let me explain. I think recently I've been wanting to do the videos that make me so passionate, like if you go on my YouTube channel, you will see obviously the YouTuber-esque videos, which I still loved doing so, so, so much. That was just an era of my life that I was just doing those, like becoming Blackpink for 24 hours, being in my Tesla for 24 hours, um, Rumi Olympics, just very YouTuber-esque videos. But then you can also find videos like the truth dot, 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 where I film on my VHS camera and I talk to the camera and I'm so raw and honest and I show you vlogs and I show you me moving and spending time with friends. I really like videos like that. And I think right now, this year specifically, I wanna travel and I wanna experience things and, and take in a lot of culture. I wanna take in serotonin culture. I wanna learn, I wanna live, I wanna experience, I wanna breathe, I wanna eat, I wanna talk to people, I wanna meet people. I just wanna like really take it there and live life while I really can live it to the fullest. So within that, I want to vlog all of that, and I want to take you guys with me. I want to show everything that I love so much about life. And I think my struggle now is I'm constantly in my apartment, and I love it a lot, and I love... Mm, <laughs> Uh-oh. I guess I love it. I mean, I do love it. I love my apartment a lot. I just am not excited to share the things that I'm doing now. They seem so ordained, I think is the word, and regular and everyday for me. Some things I am excited to show maybe are, you know, a process of going to dance class. Like, I go to dance class three times a week, like, 
for hours every day and work on these covers that are really, really cool and I love a lot and I'm really passionate about. And I don't really share that with you guys. But I get shy, honestly, because there's other people in that dance class. But, you know, content like that makes me really excited. And traveling and fashion and makeup and skincare and all of that stuff makes me really excited. So that's the kind of content I want to be making. So it could just be hard in those weeks where I don't have much going on to find inspiration and motivation to get up and fill my life when I don't feel like I'm doing the things currently in my life that I want to be doing, I guess. And that's why maybe I'm not sharing it. Whoa, did we just have an epiphany? It's all about what makes your soul happy. If if I'm not feeding... Sorry, y'all, but if I'm not feeding my soul with the content I'm making, it's really hard for me to put it out. I know a lot of other influencers can really fake it until they make it. Like, I bet, you know, the girlies on... God, I really was about to call people out. But I see some influencers that create, you know, the same saturated videos with the, with the gig and the gag, with the sister and the, and the boyfriend and... Uh, and the spook and all of that. And I'm glad that that's making them their coin and I'm glad that's making them happy. Hopefully it is. But for me, I have to be putting out things that make me proud, make me feel like, oh, the girls are going to love this. Oh, I hope the girls learn something from this, you know? And I, I love it even more when you guys love it because then it's like, oh my God, hit the jackpot. I love something. Y'all love something. We're all loving it. And I'm going to keep uploading. That is my dream that is the dream so when i'm on that flow girl i'm on top of the world but like i said in an influencer's life a lot of the times it, it can go like this it, one month you can literally be i'm not kidding busy every single day non-stop traveling non-stop from place to place to place to place so exhausted you want to rip your head off and the next month you can literally have not one thing going on and that's kind of brutal for me i feel like i asked this question to my mom and dad i feel like a couple times and i asked does a human does every human being, are we born with the requirement of like structure? Does every human being require structure? Is that why we all are trained to get up at a certain time, to go to school at a certain time, to do this math class at a certain time, lunch at a certain time? You know, we all have such scheduled structure. So in terms of efficiency, if I want to be the most efficient human possible, the most efficient version of myself possible, do I need structure or should I allow myself to do as I feel meaning should I allow myself to sleep in until 9 a.m or 10 a.m or 11 a.m if I'm exhausted knowing that at 12 p.m I'll rise and work really hard from 12 to 12 a.m or should I have the structure to wake up every single day at 8 a.m and force myself to work these hours until it becomes like an a habit it's a valid question, and I don't know if anyone has that answer. I mean, my parents told me, yes, structure, good, have structure. But I wonder what the real psychology, like, end of the day kind of answer is. Do we require structure to be the most efficient version of a human possible? Or do we just allow ourselves to do as we feel to... Make yourself, No, but now that I'm thinking about it and talking about it out loud, I do feel like structure is, like, necessary. Because it'll push you to do things even when you don't want to do them, but doing those things at the end of the day will probably make you feel good. It kind of goes back to that saying, do it today for the you tomorrow. Structure allows for that. Discipline and structure allows for that. So, yeah, I guess it's good. And that also kind of goes to, you know... My manager's telling me to get up and shut up. <laughs> and, and he didn't say like that. Well, actually, he verbatim did. And I literally, on the phone, I go, did you just tell me to get up and shut up? And he goes, yeah, I mean, you can't just, you know, sit around. And, and the worst thing you can do is just sit with your thoughts and, and let them linger. And just, you know, things are going to be hard. And things are only going to get harder. So if something's going on, sit in it in a sec think it through, maybe come up with a solution and then get up and get up and shut up, get up and shut up and go like, let's go. I don't know what I was getting to with that, but um, he slayed me with that. I don't know, you guys, I've been doing this for so long. I want to do more and bigger and more. I just want more. But also a big part of it is... <laughs> I've been doing this like for a long time with the people I love and surrounded with 
a lot of talented, amazing, inspiring, creative individuals whom are also my best friends and I've loved and I've lived with these people. I've always been surrounded by creativity and just motivation, I guess. So it can be hard to, I guess, not be, what's the word, rely, like, not rely on other people. <laughs> I guess that's all I'm trying to say is that it's hard for me to not rely on other people's energy. Mostly because sometimes I want to call up a friend to, you know, go take Instagram pictures with. But right now I feel like a lot of the people that I could call up it just doesn't feel the same. And maybe I just sound like a complaining little baby brat that just needs to take some time to himself. I don't know. If y'all have any advice to to give me, please do give it to me. But yeah, I'm even thinking about going to Florida for a few days. I think that might be really slay of me because I was sick again, which I keep getting sick and that's really, really bad. Um, so I want to go get like some blood panels done and just make sure everything is completely fine because I need to actually stop getting sick. Also, if you don't get yearly checkups, please go get your yearly checkups. It's just kind of important to keep up with your health. Health is wealth, baby. That's what I'm saying right now while I'm healthy, which hopefully I'll be healthy for a long, 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 long time until I die, RIP. But while I'm health, while I'm, I don't want to say that, Jesus. But right now it's just the time to go travel. Travel plans. Let me tell you where I want to go. I want to go to South Korea. And I mean ASAP. Like, I mean, I want to go in literal March. Might even call up a friend after this and just say, let's book South Korea. I'm ready for this. Y'all know me. I'm a little K-pop girly. Like, if you're into K-pop, we are girls. Because I am really a K-pop girly. Like, it has fully taken over me. And that's just fine. Um, So I just want to go because I just have been so indulged in K-pop. And know a lot more about South Korea now. And just... I love the culture, the food. I want to, you know, go see the skincare and just, like, get some facials done. Like, it's just like, oh, girl, take me to South Korea. Take me shopping. I'm there. The next place I want to go to, oh, my God, Coachella is also coming up after that. So that's pretty exciting. You know what? See, slow, slow month right now. Oh, my God, you guys. I forgot to mention. Guess what day it is today? It's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day if you are single, honestly, and only to the people that are single because if you are taken, I am so jealous of you. And I hope you are having such a great time on your little date, on your Jeep adventure to the beach during the sunset. Meanwhile, I am here complaining about my life. But yeah, happy Valentine's Day. Um, anyways, Coachella's coming up after that, so that's going to be crazy and fun because I'll see black pink in my area and then after that is the month of June which I am manifesting and praying and hoping and working towards going to Europe and attending my dream events and just working my little butt off oh my god you guys I actually literally want to get up and grab it to show you if there's visual people watching, whatever, I'm, I won't show it to you. I'm going to put it back here for the next episode, but I'm building a Vespa because in my first Italy trip, not first Italy trip, in my Italy trip I did last year with my family, the one that they clocked me for being depressed and anxious. Um, yeah, in that trip, I remember I kept begging my parents when we were in Rome. I was like, please, the one thing I want to do while we're in Rome is get on a Vespa and just ride around the city so I can feel young, wild, and free. Like Wiz Khalifa. Is that Wiz Khalifa? <laughs> yes. Um, living young and... Copyright. Anyways, I love Vespas now. I have an obsession with Vespas. Oh my God. And not only from just my Italy trip, my favorite Disney movie literally ever because it's literally hashtag gay. Hashtag gay, what? Luca. Such a good little Disney movie. I tried to show my friends it, but they didn't like it. But if you are into Disney movies, go watch Luca. It's so good. And in Luca, they talk about Vespas. So I love Vespas. I can't wait to go live my European dream. And, okay, this is my delusional, romanticized brain, European dream that we're about to hear. And I hope none of you ever shut me down, okay? Because it will happen. And y'all are going to be gagged when I'm vlogging all of this and it happens. 
And we're all going to be shook and we're all going to be scared and we're all going to be confused and we're all going to be living our truth and we're all going to be really excited and really, um, yeah. So my dream is to show up to Europe looking so chic, so good, vlog camera and all, mm, mm, suitcase, uh, suburban, minivan, whatever it may be. A nice little pickup from the airport, heading straight to a beautiful hotel. Uh, paparazzi, paparazzi, meeting you guys. Oh, yes. Uh, taking selfies, hanging out, um, doing whatever. Wait, this is what I'm saying, the delusion. But okay, let's keep going. So after that, check into the hotel. Got to freshen up. Got to freshen up. Got to go downstairs. And then whatever, a couple days doing the, the fashion stuff, doing whatever I got to do, whatever. This is where the story can take point A or point B. Point A. The story goes, I then go with my best friend. We go rent Vespas. We are riding Vespas around just the entire city of Rome, looking so beautiful like we're in literally Emily in Paris, my favorite show of all time, seriously. Um, we are just looking stunning in the Vespas, riding around, riding around, riding. Oh, I'm getting spunky. I don't know what's happening. The mania is hitting. Oh. Anyways, so... Yeah, riding around, looking so good. Maybe we stop at a little cafe, lock up the Vespas, beep, beep. We go into the cafe, grab a little coffee. Or honestly, in Europe, they'd be drinking wine at 9 a.m. So maybe grab a little glass of wine. Oh, wait, I'm driving a Vespa. No wine, just coffee. Go in there, grab a little espresso shot, look so chic. Just giggle, laugh. I'm in my own world with my best friend. Oh, me having no friends and talking about being in Europe with my best friend. Love my life. Um... Being with my best friend, we're in our own little world, skin glowing, looking so good. A man taps me on the shoulder. He goes, buongiorno. I go, le capisce l'inglese? That means, do you understand English? And then he says, yes, I do. And then he says, you're really cute. Whatever, we meet there. We meet there. We, me and my best friend go, I gotta go. We write our little, but I give him my number. I gotta go. Whatever, we're our little Vespas. We go do our thing. He texts me later when we're at the hotel. I freshen up. He comes to meet me, whatever. He gives me a ride in his Vespa. But my Vespa's like a cute light blue. Like I'm seeing it like my Lego set. His Vespa's like black and like has like cute silver accents that are very like manly. Mine's like the girly Vespa. You know what I mean? And it's the girls that gotta get it. Um, so that's point A. Point B is more so like I'm at my hotel, whatever. Maybe I'm like, oh my God, wait, wait, stop. Because I'm literally like, I got butterflies. Like, that's crazy. Like, if this ever happens to me, like I'm literally living like another Cinderella story. Like, okay, that was the most annoying eight seconds of your life. I'm so sorry I said that. And I've been saying the word like way more than I ever should. So I'm going to try and really take it out of my vocabulary. So. Point B, we're at a bar, we're at the club, whatever it may be. Honestly, no. Let's take it to the next level. We're at a fashion after party. Fashion after party, exclusive, swarmed. I'm kidding. That part needs to actually go away. But exclusive little after party, fashion. It's giving everything the girls wanted to give. It's giving exclusive. It's giving, you know, cute outfits. It's giving chic. It's giving... You, you know, just like the European story, like, of that. Oh, my God, I can't wait for this. Me saying I can't wait for this because I'm manifesting it, baby. There, I this guy comes up to me. He's not an influencer. He's not, like, a super, like, big celeb. I want him to be kind of, like, more behind the scenes, like, maybe a little bit more low-key, just, like, really successful, of course, but working for himself, working to just build himself up and not in a public way where he needs all the attention and eyes on him. But he sees me. He sees me shining, dancing, dancing, dancing with Jenny from Blackpink. I'm just doing my little thing. And I go, oh, oh, my God. Hi. And then he's like, oh, hello. I'm obsessed with you. I saw you from across the room. I need to I need to dance with you. Let's have a drink. Let's talk. We start talking. We start having a good time. We're in love. We start falling in love. He says, let's get out of here. I go, get out of the most exclusive party in Paris. I'm down. He goes outside. I'm like, where's the car? He goes, my bike's over here. It's a Vespa. I go, and he gives me the helmet. He gives me the helmet, of course. And I get on the back of the bike, and we go, and the rest is history. The rest is European history. We're in love, and we now have two kids. We're living in Cannes. 
Cannes, France, small little quaint town, <laughs> with a convertible and a Vespa for the kids. So that's my, um, yeah, so that's, that's what I mean. Like, the life of an influencer is really hard because it's just like, yeah. So now it's making me think back on the entire episode and everything I've said. I mean, yes, those hardships are crazy. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat's getting honestly dry. But when you romanticize your life a little bit and hope for the best, like, because that could happen to me. That could happen to you. That could happen to any of us, actually. That could literally happen to any of us. If anyone, if any one of us went to go check into a hotel and looked really, really pretty and then went to the club, you could get spotted by a guy in a Vespa. Girl, let's go live our European dreams. But not you, girls. The girlies can get kidnapped, so be very careful and do not get on the back of a Vespa with a random guy. Shame on you if you do, because I don't want you to get kidnapped or killed. That's really brutal and tough for girls. Like, for me, I at least have, like, a little bit of hope that I'm not going to get brutally murdered because I'm like, I'm a guy. You can't take me. Also, my wrist is as tiny as, like, a 17-year-old girl, so maybe actually I could totally get kidnapped and taken. But le less likely, you know? And for girls, you kind of have to, like, what's the what's the one, two steps, like, to make sure you don't get kidnapped, you know? Always be with a friend, I guess. Check in. Go on TikTok. Go on the girly side of TikTok, my girls. Make sure you're always safe when you're out. I know the girls have, like, little tips and tricks all around TikTok. But, yeah. So, right now, you know, it's February 14th. And maybe it's just today, I guess, the this first half of the episode was pretty brutal and sad. Because I think I've just been in a funk for the past couple of days. Talking it, out, talking it out, though, has kind of helped me out. This is why having a podcast is good. Also therapy, also a friend. Um, but it's kind of also shown me, like, yo, February might be kind of slow right now, but just wait till April and June, baby. If you, you know, keep yourself to it February and March and work hard and, you know, maybe March I'll go to South Korea and ah, go to 7-Eleven, do some 7-Eleven South Korean mukbangs for you. Or, se se wait, 7-Eleven? South Korean 7-Eleven mukbangs for you. There, there it is. Um, because they have just like a bunch of really cool food and I'm just so excited. So, <coughs> wait, honestly, water break, everyone. Here's a humming, um, a humming intermission. Okay, that was awful. But... There's a lot that to be excited about, y'all. And if there aren't things to be excited about in your day-to-day, -day, I think it's about making things to be excited about. Like, okay, what do I have to be excited about tomorrow? I mean, I have dance, which is exciting because I'm filming a really... Ooh! Not the first voice crack on Seriously. Is that the first voice crack? Oof. Oof. But tomorrow I have a dance class to be really excited about. What else do I have? You know, not much planned. So let's make something. Let's plan something. Mochi, you want to go do something fun? Let's go do something fun. Me and my dog. Ooh, girl, I have a burp coming. Anyone got IBS? That's just my truth. Does anyone here have IBS? And if you do, I think I have it. So DM me. Help me out. Um, I love y'all a lot. And thank you for listening to this podcast. I know that it has honestly... Gotta get real here for a sec. It has changed drastically. It went from a podcast that was about kind of talking to other people and hosting other people to just really becoming a journal for me and a place where I just want to connect with y'all on a really personal level and tell you my personal stories and tell you my opinions and just tell you about my life. I really, I like this a lot because I feel like it, it keeps me, it keeps y'all posted on what's going on. For example, me going to that party like a week and a half ago and making up with a friend, I might have that friend come on this podcast and we just will dish all of the tea and you will just know all of the no-name stories I've said in the past three episodes, you know? Because then there will be a name to the person. So I'm excited because it's, it's really taking down that wall between us. And I think over time I've grown more comfortable just being in the space to just like be so real with y'all. As well as being a good influence though. There's a difference between being real with someone and then um, putting things out that, you know, aren't good for the general public. Like, y'all don't need to see me being an angry little munchkin. 
But y'all have seen that. And y'all probably will see that. But y'all have seen that, actually. There ain't nothing to hide here. But I love you, and I appreciate you guys watching. For the people that do watch and follow this podcast. And I also want you to be, like, be so for real. Like, yo, yo, you are the people I consider my biggest supporters and my, like, best friends in a way. And truly, because... You support. I think what what makes a best friend? People that support what you do, people that love you the way you love them, um, people you constantly keep in the loop, and people you just like care about and show like love to. It's just like we basically are those things. So I want y'all to be real. And if you don't like certain things about the podcast or you love certain things about the podcast, I've gotten so much good feedback, which is so nice about people just like opening up and just telling me things and asking for advice and stuff like that. So that's been really nice to see, but I want more feedback. I want you guys to tell me the real truth to you about how you feel and yeah, keeping up and just like, tell me if you want crazier stories. Tell me if you want me to start saying the names because you hate the no names. Tell me if you think I suck at telling stories and you want me to fix certain things about it. It's just give me the feedback. I'm asking for it. I'm reaching for it. Please give it to me. Yeah, but I love you and I appreciate you and Audio listeners, I love you too if you're not watching because I'm making eye contact with the camera. I, I love my audio listeners because that's how I listen to podcasts, as I always say. So I get you. I feel you. But if you guys did enjoy this episode of Seriously, you can go listen to it on all streaming platforms. And if you want to watch it, you can go watch it on Past Your Bedtime. And yeah, that is Seriously Episode 10. May we have drama next week? Potentially. We might have a big feud. Maybe we'll have a glass of wine to to help us, you know, get ready for that. But I love you all, and I hope you have a good rest of your week, and I will see you next week. Leave me some comments if you want to know anything else. Okay, goodbye.